In this video, I'll be telling you how to become a pilot in India and more specifically, I'll be talking about the steps and requirements that you go through while your CPL training journey itself all the way until you get your commercial pilot's license. So if you guys are ready, fasten those cockpit seat belts and shoulder harnesses because we are ready for takeoff. and welcome back to the Flytuber, Flying Simplified through YouTube. My name is Ali Asghar and on this channel, I talk about interesting aviation facts and aircraft knowledge. So if you are an aviation enthusiast and are interested to know more about aircrafts and flying, consider subscribing. Now before we start, let me tell you that this is the part 2 of a 3 part series. While in the previous part 1 video, I talked about the prerequisites, the documents and steps and things you need before even you start your training. So I highly recommend that you go and watch that video out. I'll put the video link up here and also below in the description. Without further ado, let's jump into the details of flying training itself. Now continuing on from the previous video, once you have your SPL, you are good to start your flying training. Broadly speaking, the flying training consists of two main parts that is flying theory and the practical or the actual flying itself. Let's talk about the theory first. To get a CPL, you need to pass six aviation examinations on subjects like aviation meteorology, air navigation, air regulations, etc. I'll talk about these subjects in a later video. But talking more about these examinations, five of these exams are conducted by the DGCA and one is conducted by the WPC. Uh, what these bodies are, I'll explain in a later video. But the thing is, 70 is a very important number in aviation because most of your examinations, are, I think almost all of your examinations, require at least 70% of marks for you to pass that examination. Most of your examinations are multiple choice question type papers uh, and they do not have negative markings. The exams are conducted every quarter. That means once every three months you have an examination session wherein you can apply for as many papers as you want and are confident that you can clear. The thing here is that you need to clear the examination only once which will then be valid for another five years. So if at all you do not complete all your requirements for your CPL in the next five years, then you will have to resit and retake this examination. Trust me, these exams are very tough, especially India is one of the countries which has very difficult aviation examinations when compared to all the other countries and it requires a lot of consistent hard work and input into your studies. Now I'm not telling that you cannot clear the papers on your own, you can but it will be a bit difficult and it's always advised and I personally suggest you to join a good aviation institution because believe me, I've seen people uh, struggling for almost six to even eight attempts per paper. There are many good aviation institutions out there, especially in the Ramphalchok area of New Delhi. Now this area is comparable to Kota where you can find a lot of IIT aspirants. Similarly, you can find a lot of pilots and trainee pilots in the Ramphalchok area. Um, and finally, among our pilot community, it is said that the person at the Xerox shop knows more navigation than a trainee pilot. But I stay in Hyderabad, which was actually very fortunate for me because I got introduced to this awesome aviation institution known as V2 Aviation Academy. Now, this aviation institution is run by Captain Murtaza Ali and I know him personally. He is a gem of a person with a lot of knowledge and experience in teaching students and there are a lot of students who have cleared from his institution. Now this isn't a paid promotion and nobody has paid me to mention the name of this institution here but this is just a personal experience which worked out for me and I'm sharing this experience with you guys. So if you are interested, the number and details will be coming on the screen and also maybe I'll put it up in the description. You can call the captain himself directly and maybe schedule a mock-up session if you would like. Now that was just from my personal experience. There are many good aviation institutions out there. All I suggest you is just to do a good research before joining one. Now moving on to the next and most exciting part of your training, which is the actual flying itself. But before you start your flying training, I recommend that now is the best time for you to get your class one medicals done now class one medical is a much more rigorous type of medical so it's better to get it done before you start your flying training because most of the money you spend in your training is spent for flying and while you can fly with your class two medicals but for applying for CPL you need a class one medical and if god forbid later on you were declared unfit in the class one medical then all your money that you spend in your flying training will be a waste Talking about the flying itself, you need to fly for 200 total hours in the last 5 years and you'll be flying all of these hours in small trainer aircrafts which is single engine or multi-engine piston aircrafts. So you start your training initially with dual flights 
these are instructional flights and uh, you will fly with an instructor but after about 20 hours or so you will be checked for your abilities to handle this aircraft and if they feel that you can handle the aircraft then you will be released and you will fly your first solo flight which is a major milestone in your entire aviation career. Side note you will need an FRTOL before you are released for your first solo flight. Now what an FRTOL is you can watch in my video on types of pilot licenses. From there on you will fly a mix of dual instructional flights and solo flights to accomplish the sub required within these 200 hours I'll put up these requirements here on the screen so you will fly in the day you will fly at night you will fly without having to look outside and just relying on your instruments known as your instrument flying and before that you'll have to fly certain hours on a simulator just looking at the instruments the experience itself is amazing you will get a lot of beautiful views outside your cockpit and flying itself is very very fun thing to do uh, I just recommend that you enjoy your flying enjoy your training and keep learning and progressing at the end of the flight training you need to pass certain skill tests to prove that you are good at handling handling these aircrafts in different situations. You need to give a skill test for the day which is known as your GFT day check. You need to pass a GFT night or the night check and you need to pass an IR or an instrument rating check proving that you know how to handle these aircraft in IMC conditions just looking at your instruments. Now somewhere in the middle of your training you will have to get your ELP or your English language proficiency test done. This test assesses you of your ability to communicate in English and you need to have at least level 4. Lastly you make a huge bunch of all these documents which has your SPL, your medical license, your flying logbook. Uh, your examination results, your flying test results and you also include certain documents from your prerequisites video which I made before uh, and then you send all of this across to DGCA and that's how you apply for your commercial pilot license. You will get your CPL license within a month or two although these days the CPL application procedure has become online and the processing time for your CPL has drastically reduced and you're getting your licenses earlier than that. Congratulations you now have your CPL license and you can officially call yourself a captain and wear these three stripes and this is exactly the reason why I am wearing these three stripes here because uh, I'm not associating myself to my designation in the airline so uh, I'm calling myself a CPL holder here now regarding the order whether you should fly first or clear your papers first Mr. Dagan Sagar asks an interesting question in the comments section saying that is it good to complete DGCA exams before training or should you study and do the flying training parallelly very good question there uh, first of all it's very foolish to fly first and then do your training because you have something called as recency you need certain number of hours in the past six months plus you'll also be stopped after a certain point um, in the training if you don't have certain papers but now talking between whether you should pass your papers first and then start training or should you do it parallelly in my view both have their own pros and cons if you clear your papers first uh, flying training will be very easy you won't have split concentration you won't have to you know concentrate on your flying and also on your papers uh, but the downside is that you will have to start your flying training later on because uh, it may take time for you to clear papers. My suggestion is that if you are going for this method, make sure to put in extra and more hard work in your papers and make sure to clear your papers in first or maximum second attempt so that you can start your flying training as early as possible. Now the other way is to do your flying training and pass your papers simultaneously. This also is a good way uh, because many of your theory examination questions will also be solved based on your flying experience. But apart from this, there is an another method to do your papers and flying and I personally think that this is the most optimum way to do it and which is you should clear your most difficult papers which is your air navigation and air technical examinations. You have to pass these examinations before you get an enrolled and before you start your flying training in this way what will happen is you will have done with the main stuff before even you start your flying and while flying simultaneously you only have to concentrate on the easier theory examinations this will make sure that the main difficult stuff is done and also not delay your flying much question of the day which one of the above steps do you have doubts about and are not clear enough and you would want me to give more further details about uh, you can comment that below or also you can forward in my dm on my instagram the id will be mentioned here and also in the description below that's pretty much all about your flight training these are the steps and roadmap of you to get a commercial pilot's license well that's it for this part two video here guys i hope that this video was very informative 
informational and if you like the content smash that thumbs up button and share the channel and the video with all your friends because i'm sure that this video will be very helpful for a lot of you out there and if you haven't done already do subscribe to the channel do stick around for my next part 3 video wherein i'll be telling you what all steps and things you can do after you get your commercial pilot's license and if you want to make sure that you don't miss that video do hit the notification bell icon until then happy landings